intrigued about this presentation ever since I knew it was all about zombies. Please welcome Josh Corman. All right. So why zombies, right? Everyone thinks that zombies are stories about the dead. Zombies are stories about the living. It's about survival. It's about what do you need to do to keep your wits in extreme circumstances. <laughs> Poor little boy. Okay, so why zombies love PCI is what we're gonna talk about here. So a couple things, zombies are not your friends. If you see one, two taps to the head, okay? There are three things that stick out to me. First off, defining characteristics. Zombies are hungry, they want to eat your brains, okay? They're incredibly persistent and tenacious in the pursuit of eating your brains. And one at a time, you can take them. But in larger numbers, they can be quite menacing. <laughs> now, there are different kinds of zombies. We have the, the slow, dumb ones from the Romero films. We have the fast, smart ones from you know, Resident Evil or 28 Days Later. If only they were just zombies. We have vampires, werewolves, etc. So there's different tools for different jobs, right? But why PCI? Well, many of you know I caused a little trouble last year comparing PCI to the No Child Left Behind Act for Information Security. And essentially, we have early adopters that do elite security and they do fantastic things. The, late, the middle majority takes a few years to catch on. The laggards usually do it a few years later. Well, PCI really tried to protect during the fourth layer, which was the negligent who had previously done nothing. In their attempts to raise the bar for them, they turned that middle average team into a laggard spender. But we tell our children with the three little pigs that the, the straw house of good isn't good enough. We also have the stick house and the brick house. So if the undead walk the earth, they're not after what's in our wallets. They want what's in our brains. They're after our intellectual property. And they're taking it because we are distracted by focusing almost myopically on our custodial data. So, as we run through the field, would you want to defend your friends and family in that straw house, in the dilapidated wooden barn, or in a defensible structure of a brick building? I don't know about you, I'm going for the brick building. So during the zombie apocalypse, we have to keep these things in mind. Now, we may not have zombies, but what we do have is constant and disruptive change. We have adversary adjustments like Stuxnet and Google Aurora and Night Dragon and pick your favorite attack du jour. These compliance regimes are breeding like bunnies. We talk about virtualization, cloud mobilization, consumerization. All these things impact our ability to secure our environments. So let's talk about what APT isn't. An APT isn't the malware. An APT isn't a vulnerability. It's a who and a how, not a what. So they're adaptive, they're goal-oriented, they're deliberate, they're patient, they're undeterred. They know you've passed your assessment and they do not care. In fact, they're counting on it. Instead, we fight a different kind of zombie. We fear the auditor more than the attacker. <laughs> and again, they do not want what is in our wallet, they want what is in our brains. Oh, guys, guys, the, the PCI meeting is up the hall. <laughs> so we've broken the information security market with the cost and complexity in a down economy. We have turned to checklists to protect us. And as such, we now have a compliance majority and a risk management minority. And we've got to do something to fix that or we will not survive. Perhaps you're thinking, but Josh, PCI is good, right? Of course it is. It's an 80-20 rule, Josh, right? Except the 80-20 rule is not magic. Sometimes 20% of the solution, solution solves 80% of the threat. But why do we believe that best practices from 2003 with a less talented adversary hold up? So speaking of the 80s, in 1984, I listened to the Michael Jackson Thriller album on my cutting edge, state of the art Sony Walkman. By 94, it was the disc bin on CD, and by 2004, it was my Gen 1 iPod. And yet, state of the art in 1984 was signature antivirus, and state of the art in 2004 is still signature antivirus? Something's wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, let's put some data behind this so it's not just conjecture. According to Verizon, 94% of the breached records involved custom malware, which did not give a crap that you had signature antivirus. Okay? Is that a 20 rule? 
So as a consequence, we are zombie food. Now, my wife's a dietitian. She gets me the zombie food guy pyramid, mostly brains. <clears throat> but like Samuel, Jackson, Samuel L. Jackson says, it's not the cards in his wallet. But again, they don't eat our credit cards. They want our intellectual property. So I put some thought to this. We need a survival guide pyramid. How do we survive? And this is just a baby thought, but the first decision as we're being attacked is choosing between that dilapidated barn and the brick building. Now some of you know I started something called Rugged Software, and it's really defined, one of the aspects is can we start to procure more defensible infrastructure so you have a fighting chance. But it's not just our software and our hardware. It's Gene Kim 101. We also need IT operational excellence. If I look around the teammates, are these guys going to get me killed or can they help me survive the night? So this is know what it changes, know what you have, zero one plan changes, visible ops 101. In addition to that, the third most important thing isn't security either. It's situational awareness. We are often fighting in the dark. And we fight bravely but die quickly because we don't have the light and the visibility. So before you buy another anti-foo, we need to have more eyes and ears to notice more whispers and echoes. This is the Richard Baitlick incident response. See more sooner, act more promptly and agilely. Only then in that context can we look at countermeasures. So as you walk the floor looking for the latest, greatest technology, whoever coined people, process, technology was brilliant to put people first and technology last. So it should be a slave to our observations of the environment. In closing, the most ironic lesson is that we can learn the most from the zombies themselves. We have become passive and apathetic and complacent with compliance checkboxes. We need to get hungry again. Number two, we need to be persistent in pushing beyond good to better and best. And to the thought leaders in this room, one at a time, we are easily defeated. Collectively, we can be menacing. <laughs>